Hi, I'm Dan Roberts of Daniel Roberts Stringworks. I'm a full-time professional luthier and I'm here to show you um, some neck carving techniques that I use with uh, Noel Leger's uh, rasps. I looked for years for really good quality handmade rasps and the last couple of years I found Noel and I've just been thrilled to be able to use his rasps. It's a real pleasure. So anyway, uh, what you see here is basically a, this happens to be a maple neck, but it's been rough sawn uh, with a band saw into a rough shape. It's been dovetailed with a dovetail bit on a router. And uh, the head stake stock has been roughly shaped. You can see it's still uh, not completely finished here, but it's got the holes drilled and so on. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, show a, a, a basic rough carve I won't spend the whole time. It takes about probably 30 minutes to do a rough carve. And the reason I do them in several steps is because uh, by shaping this heel into a shape that will be the finished shape, it allows me to n not carve in uh, later when I'm doing the dovetail into the rough area here. So essentially you end up with uh, a, a rough shape like this and, and then I'll glue the neck on or glue the fingerboard on me so that it's like this. And then I do the final carving at that point. So this would essentially be a, a rough carved neck ready to have the fingerboard glued on. And this one I'll start with just to give you an idea of how the rasps work on the rough neck. I have several different necks I do. Everything from custom to a, a, a modern profile neck and a vintage profile neck which is bigger and a harder V profile. This is a Leger half round number five and that's what I do my rough hogging with. These big ones really take a lot and they'll, they'll tend to um, catch so sometimes it's not a bad idea when you're using the real rough rasp to use a, a glove to protect yourself otherwise you can tear your skin open pretty fast. The other thing to remember is that ideally though it does take a little bit of elbow grease you don't really want to end up uh, doing all the work with your muscles you want to let the rasp do the work so um, that means you know a little gentler approach usually works best very handy to have something like the the freestanding vise you have here so that you can move it around, change your direction. One thing that's very key is that you don't carve one area um, to a, a, a close to a final point before you move into another area. So what you'll see here is I'm going ahead and working the transitions. I'll be working in the heel transition area. This half round has a more extreme radius, which works great in these to rough out these these rougher areas.
you can see how fast this is working makes it almost unnecessary to use something like a shaper to rough everything out because uh, let me tip it this way so you can see how fast that's that's shaping so I'll use the rough <coughs> rasp a little bit more rough out the heel area Again, the right hand is stitching works great on both sides so long as you work from underneath on one side from the top on the other. I use maple on arch top necks, octave mandolin necks, and uh, you know most commonly. And occasionally when I'm doing a, a flat top made out of maple. So when I talked with Noel, he suggested that if I was using maple, I should go ahead and get the uh, sapphire coating. And I'm really glad I did. I But in fact, I actually do more mahogany than anything. So that's what you'll see me do in the final carve on. Six modeler's rasp now <coughs> that I use quite a lot down in those curved areas. Still fairly coarse stitching, but allows me a little bit more control. At this point I want to be sure that I don't get 
too far in here and end up undercutting where the fingerboard will go. So I can't do any final carving. I want to bring this heel area. I'm going to use a French heel so it'll come to a, a point or a ridge like you see on this one. And I'm not going to spend too much time here. But essentially that's what we're doing. Is we're, we're going to rough out the shape. As I move in closer to the final shape here, I'm going to go with this number 8 stitching on a cabinet rasp. So it's a little, little less radius than the half round and probably pretty similar, maybe a little bit less than the modeler's rasp, but wider. So, uh, but it's still plenty. Plenty of radius to get in here, and now it's going to allow me to refine that shape. I'm going to go back to the modeler's raft to introduce some curve and sweep into here, almost an hourglass shape. This is one of the areas where it's really critical to establish that now so that when I'm going in and relieving the area around the dovetail, I don't come out into the area I'm going to need to carve away later. That ends up giving you gaps in your, uh, in your neck fit area and you can't have that. See this gentle figure eight I'm putting in here shape or hourglass shape, I guess is a better way to put it. I don't need to worry too much down in here, that's going to get taken in against the fingerboard later. I just basically want to. Want to introduce that shape. 